the uh, Caitlin Clark. Um, she is obviously the superstar of women's college basketball in this hour. She is the most talked about player in women's basketball, period, WNBA or college. And for now, at least, Rob, the WNBA players that are getting shine are the ones who are talking about her. <laughs> Their comments about her are why we're talking about them. And I'm talking about Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird, Rob. So they had one of those, you know, simulcast during the championship game where they were on screen, you know, like Peyton Manning and Eli Manning do for Monday night football games, Thursday night football, whatever it is. And so they were talking during the game about Clark and um, Diana Taurasi said something that, that caught a little, little heat. Here it is. Reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's there's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. And you're going to see it on this side where you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. You know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. I mean, Tarazi Rob stepped into the NBA or WNBA and averaged 17 points her her rookie year. Um, and she's averaged 19 for a career. So she was pretty much, she was rookie of the year, uh, finished third in the MVP voting. You know, so I look, I'm going to be honest, and I, I'm, I don't watch much WNBA, so maybe I'm wrong. I think Caitlin Clark going to step into the WNBA and go berserk. <laughs> I think she's going to put up big numbers in the WNBA just like she does in women's college basketball. I mean, I'm not saying she'll be that dominant, but I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm ignorant of the WNBA and I don't watch it very often. So, okay, that's possible. But I think she's going to get busy in the WNBA. And and Rob, most, not all, but so many of the great ones in the NBA. And, you know, you can take out the high school guys because obviously there's a, you know, a, a learning curve there from going high school to, to the pros. Even the soul, LeBron still played well as a rookie average 20. But Jordan, Bird, Magic, Obviously, the big guys, Kareem, Olajuwon, all those guys. Rob, they all stepped in. And here's the thing. She's not a one and done. She's coming in after four years of college. I think she's ready. So, uh, you know, we'll see. But I think she's going to do her thing in college. This is the issue I have. Shame on them, Chris. To like, Tarazi? Yeah, shame on them to, like, talk down to her and about what to expect in the WNBA because that's not the moment for that. She's still in college. Right. She hasn't. She shouldn't be talking about what what is in store when this woman has just had a, a major impact on on women's college basketball. They sound like Debbie Downers. They sound jealous. That's what they sound like. I have no idea why that's the topic of conversation now. She hasn't been drafted, Chris. She's not playing in the WNBA yet. I'm not saying you can't get there. But my God, really? Is that is that the moment to talk about, oh, wait till she gets to the WNBA. Hey, <laughs> Tarasi and those she guys. She had 18 in the first quarter. Well, wait till she right, gets to the right. WNBA. That's what that I'm saying, be Chris. In. That, that's the what Liberty I'm... about to shut that stuff down. <laughs> is that the right place, Chris? Am I being wrong? No, you're it's, absolutely right. It's not right. the right you're place. You're absolutely right. And Tarasi and them, they said, well, you guys did so well and the, and the, and all the stuff you did, y'all averaged 6,000 fans 20, 28 years later. And you got no TV ratings, all this stuff. <laughs> Come on, stop it. Well, Rob, you're getting at the heart of the matter, which is I, it, it just been there's been a lot of hate for Caitlin Clark out there. Absol Coming from women. From Chris. The men that loved her. LeBron's tweeting, you know, you know why they love just her? hating. Like they giving her love. We giving her props. It, I'm sorry. How can you not give her props? I, I the would, girl is bad. And you know why men are attracted to her 
Her style of game, Chris. The logo threes, all that. The That's, handle. Yes. The, the assist, the, the unbelievable. She's a phenomenal pass. Yes, like that stuff. And all we hear is these women who are accomplished. Nobody's taking away your your tr- championship trophies well, they're, they're and all jealous that. They're jealous, Chris. That, yeah, they're jealous that they didn't draw this level of attention. And I guess that's competitiveness. But And, and I, Rob, let, let's just keep it real. If we were in their shoes... We might feel the same Chris, jealousy, uh, but I think we know better than I think. I know I would just say the right thing. I, I want to say this. I to would you. not be out there spouting my jealousy. I, I feel like I, you know I'm not in that situation. We, we, we already it's have that. It's human to feel jealousy, but we but, but we have. A, why we, are they saying it? Why aren't they supporting her? But we have we have a similar thing that we can point to, Chris, in our in our profession and our lives. All right. We were all on first take, Stephen A., you, me, right? right? We were all there. Right. Right. We were. Me and you have been on the only three have been on all three shows. And I'm right. talking about Cold Pizza when it was first and ten. When it was Cold Pizza, right. Right? Uh, first, first take. take and Undisputed. Me, yep. you, and Skip are the only three have been in all of Even Stephen A. wasn't on Cold Pizza. Right. Okay? Right. I'm and just he wasn't on undisputed. Uh, obviously Undisputed. Right. But my point is... We don't go out and bash Stephen A because he right. is at the top of the profession, do we? We're not bashing Shannon. Oh, That's he what I'm saying. He ain't no journalist. Exactly. You know, he what he he didn't cover any sports. What's he talking? You're right. That's what I'm saying. Why would no, you do you're that? Right. We you're were right. in the same position. We could feel a little, you know, like why are they getting all this attention? Why is why is Stephen A the guy at ESPN and we were working yep. there and why didn't yep. we get No, I'm just saying like I don't understand. No, you're right. And I don't you even feel jealous over those guys. We don't I'm we're not jealous. We're happy right. for those guys. We know what work those guys put in. We've we work with Stephen A. Yep. We've seen him put in all the work. I'm happy that he's at the top. Yep. 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 So yeah, I don't it, know why I they can't be you. happy for her. Well, it, but you agree with me. It's yeah. just straight jealousy. It's jealousy. And and, and it's not I mean, obviously, people are saying this. I don't know. Is she better than Diana Taurasi? Who knows? I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I'm not an expert on the women's game. Don't like I, you know, covered it in men's game. But it's like you said, Rob. It's her style of play. Yes, that's what. And I've attractive. mentioned: is there a racial element? Okay, probably little. There's in, that's in most parts of American society. But Taurasi did is white. Sue Bird is white. They didn't get this kind of attention. Brianna Stewart, you because know what they I mean? didn't play that kind so of right. So it's her style. It really is her the way she plays the logo threes, the handle. And I'm gonna say this: and anybody that really played basketball at any significant level knows the way UConn guarded her. And props to Gino Ariema because that was a great game plan. I mean, it wasn't a boxing one, but basically they had the one player. Her whole job was just to be in Caitlin Clark's grill. And then in the second half, or UConn kind of did, I'm not UConn, South Carolina kind of did the same thing. And Rob, she had to work. That is so difficult. When you have somebody that's really not even paying attention to the rest of the, what's hot, she is just focused on you and denying you the ball and and staying in your face, that is so difficult. And to go through that for forty minutes, and then and she, I, how many points she have against Utah? Con Rob G looked at was it forty? Is that when she had? Or she had forty one against LSU, I think. LSU, yeah. But something, something crazy. But and I mean that is so difficult and challenging. But Rob, it, it, to me, it seems like like you talk about women. Not supporting the WNBA, and, and Chris, you know, I'm, this is a somewhat related to that because they're the ones hating on her, and it doesn't make any sense. I mean, like, like really, and and every time I ask women, have they gone to a game? None of none of them have gone to a game. And and let me give you this for Tarasi, she had her, twenty-one nine and seven against UConn. Against UConn, uh, Caitlin drew to eighteen point nine right yesterday. Chris, Tarasi's three national championship games drew. 15.5 combined, those yeah, three. I mean, it, it, it. And here is the Las Vegas Aces, who had the highest attendance in the in the WNBA, Chris, 9,500 9, 9, per game. The average in the league is 6,000. 
and they already moved their first game against Caitlin Clark to the T-Mobile Arena, not where they usually play. You know why? Oh, yeah. So that they could sell 20,000 tickets. So they, no, it's gonna be, I mean, yeah. why, why, why are they bashing her? They should be excited because that could mean more money for all of them. For all the women, finally. Yep. I, I just, and more attention. And you see it, it sounds Rob, like jealousy. Like we, it is. And it's not just them. Lynette Woodard, not great them. all-time legend. Why you heard you what bri- she said. What did she say? She said she didn't break my, that's whose Division I NCAA scoring record Clark broke. She said she didn't break my record. Be, I'm paraphrasing, but basically because Lynette Woodard used a men's ball and they didn't have the three-point line when she played. And that's fine. That's a fact, and we get that. But that's like Kareem saying LeBron didn't break my record. Shoot, when I played, we didn't have a three-point line for the first half of my career. And not that he would have been shooting it, but if he came up today, he'd be shooting it. Yep, he would. And so, but that's not what you do. But that's not what you should do. The games evolve. You shouldn't be saying that, Chris. Like, that's not your place. And now she's apologizing for it. Yeah, she should because it sounds like sour. Why would you say that? Like she can only it is sour. She can can only play with the ball that's that's out there that they're playing with now. It was good that they switched the ball. Obviously, women's hands are smaller, so that was good. And I get what Woodard say. It's not like it's that's an interesting point, but she still broke your record. Right. It just it just. I mean, you can go look at all of the sports, Rob. And they will be the same. Chris, they didn't used to play 17 games a year in NFL. So when somebody breaks a record, are you going to say, well, we only played 16 or we only played 14? You know what? We, you know? we were talking about Hank Aaron. They tried to discredit when he passed Babe Ruth. You know why, Chris? When Babe Ruth played, there was only 154 games, and it was increased right. to 162. Right. So right. people were saying, well, his record shouldn't count because he played in 162 <laughs> games, and Babe Ruth played in 154. Like that. that and just, it wouldn't, the career record wouldn't even matter. Right. But, yeah, but, the, but that's I, I what hear, they were yeah. trying to use to as, as to anything. discredit him. And Rob, you know, too, as we've interviewed women in, in, on our show or other shows, and about, or even just watching like ESPN, watching the coverage, it's interesting because whenever, uh, not all the time, but a lot of times when the interviewer has brought up Caitlin Clark, you see the female being interviewed, whether she's an ex, usually oh, ex player or something, go. they bring up, oh yeah, she's a, they quickly comment about her quickly. And then go to, but there's so many other great players out there. You got Juju over and Watkins over, doing right? This. You got, and it's like that's where the jealousy comes out, and they're trying to say it's not just her. And we get it; there are other great players out there, but she is the one that is taking your game to a different level. And that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about everybody. Like why why do we have to do that? Like right, like right. this is a moment. We we understand that there are the great players. When Juju's in the national championship game and the TV ratings are eighteen, then we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about Juju. I mean, of course. Like I just don't like yeah, what it, part don't you get? It, it there it's interesting, Rob. It's it's all it's just jealousy. I don't see it coming from the men. Obviously, men aren't going to be jealous of her. No, but. You know, the women, I mean, like you said, it's it's like crabs in a barrel mentality. It's terrible. It's like, why y'all hating? And, you know and, what I mean? We, Seriously. And we're why talking are about y'all, it And that's why, that's another reason, just in and of itself, it was classy. But that's another so reason why classy. I give Dawn Staley classy. credit. Because she's, you know, a legend in the game herself, not only coaching, but playing. I'm sure she knows a lot of these women that are have been ripping, you know, or at least subtly being critical of Clark or not giving her all the love she should get. And she's probably had conversations where people have brought that up to her. And yet in the midst of all that, she still went out of her way to show her love. And that was her moment. And she didn't have to. She She certainly didn't have to. She didn't have to. If she hadn't said a thing, nobody would have been like, Oh, she was hating. You know, she didn't have to do that. So,